Remuneration means here when the goods are bailed to the bailee. He is entitled to receive certain remuneration for the services he has rendered. Pledge is a special kind of bailment. Therefore, all the essential elements of bailment, all the essential elements of pledge as a pony, I can retain the good for any of the expenses, for any of the reasons that has been caused by the pledge. Good morning and welcome to the fifth session in Unit 3 Commercial Law where we are going to speak about the rights of a bailey. Now, what are the rights of a bailey? Now, the first right which I would like to talk about is the right to recover expenses which is very, very important. Why? In the contract of bailment, so when we are talking about a bailment factor, the bailey incurs expenses to ensure the safety of goods. The bailey has the right to recover such expenses from the bailer. So what happens here? Now for example, if there are goods that are being sent, the bailey has to spend some money in order to ensure the safety of the goods. So when that expenses are being occurred, the bailey will have a right to recover those expenses from the bailer. So that is why we say that the bailey will have a right and this is being discussed in the section 158 which is very very important so definitely for the bailey there is an option given where he can go and recover the expenses the next thing is about the right to remuneration now remuneration means here when the goods are bailed to the bailey he is entitled to receive certain remuneration for the services he has rendered. But in case of gratuitous bailment, the bailee is not awarded any kind of remuneration. Now what is remuneration? Payment for the services that have been done. Now this is where we have to think in our mind when the goods are bailed, which means given to the bailee, he is entitled to receive some amount as for the services that are being rendered. In the case of gratuitous bailment, that means in the case of trust, friendship, love or loyalty and all those factors, that time the bailey is not entitled for any kind of remuneration. So now you understand that the remuneration is actually a kind of payment for the services that are rendered. So in both the cases, in the case of recovering the expenses and in the case of remuneration, the bailey is entitled to get those factors. Now, the next thing is right to recover compensation. Now, this is very, very important, which is being spoken in the section 168. What does it say? At times, a situation arises wherein bailer did not have the capacity for the contract of the bailment. Bailer did not have the capacity, which means he is not in a position to continue with the bailment. Then what happens? Such a contract causing loss for the bailey. Therefore, the bailey has the right to recover such compensation from the bailer. In that situation where it is causing loss to the bailey, to whom? To the bailey where it has been causing a loss, then the bailey can go forward and recover a compensation from the bailer. So this is very very important for us to know because in most of the business cases sometimes when the bailer fails because he is not having enough capacity then this becomes a very very important factor. 
followed by the right to lion. Let me please make this factor very clearly. This is lion and please do not write L-I-O-N. That is L-I-E-N. This is very, very important. Why? Because the bailey has the right over lion, which means to say that if the bailer fails to make payment of the remuneration or does not pay the amount due, the bailey has the right to keep the goods bailed in possession until the debtor clears his due of two types that is either particular or in general which is being discussed in section 170 and 171. Now please understand this factor until and unless the dues are being cleared by the bailer towards the bailey, the bailey has the rights to keep the possession of the goods. This is very, very important. Why? Because many a times what happens is that if you have not made the payment to the person, then the person will have the right to hold the possession of the goods. This is very, very important. So even in business, we need to understand this factor until and unless the payment of dues are cleared, the goods will not come to our possession. Followed by the rights of the Bailey, we have a case in the case of Surya Investment versus the STC. The court held that expenses incurred by the Bailey during the preservation of goods underlined shall be borne by the bailer. So what happened is that in this case, in because there are some expenses that were incurred by the Bailey in terms of maintaining the goods, in terms of preserving the goods altogether, it was the due responsibility of the bailer, that is the person who had given it, he has to bone the expenses for that. So the court gave the verdict in the favor of the bailey followed by the right to suit a wrongdoer. Now, when I say the word wrongdoer, that means to say that there's something which has gone wrong, a person which has intentionally or accidentally made some mistake there. So now how do we look into it? After the goods have been bailed and any third party deprives the bailey the use of such goods, then the bailey or the bailer can bring an action against the third party, the person who has done the mistake. After the goods have been bailed, very, very important, and any third party who comes in between deprives the right of the bailey in the use of such goods, he creates a problem. He uh, makes a barricade there. He makes, he tries to bring in some sort of disturbance altogether. The bailey or the bailer will have the right to take a legal action against that third party. This is very, very important. Why? Because this tells the bailey and bailer will have all the supreme power to go back and take action against those people who are not in favor, who try to create some sort of trouble for them. Now the next one is called as pledge. Pledge is a kind of bailment that's very very important. Now most of us know that pledge is a part of our day-to-day -day life but what is pledge? First of all pledge is a kind of a bailment. Pledge is also known as pawn. Why it is it known as pawn? Because you're going to keep something and get something out of it. Now it is defined under the section 172 of the Indian Contract Act 1892. By pledge, we mean that bailment of goods as a security for the repayment or debt or loan advance or performance of obligation or promise. So I can go to a pawn shop, I can pledge my jewels and take some money for some emergency or for a business. I will be able to get that jewelry back or the gold back once I repay the debt back, the amount that I have taken from him. This is where 
pledge comes into picture. Pledge is a very, very important thing when it comes to the concept of commercial law. Pledge is also a kind of bailment. Now, the most important thing here is that the person who pledges the goods as security is known as the pledger or the pawner. So, we use the word pawner and the person who is in favor of the goods are pledged is known as the pawnee. So the person who pledges the good, suppose I am the person who pledges the good as security. So I am giving my gold ring as a pledge, as a security factor. So I will be known as the pawner and the person who takes that gold ring, keeps as a security and gives me money is known as the pawnee. Now, essentials of the pledge, which is very, very important for us to know, since pledge is a special kind of bailment, therefore, all the essential elements of bailment, all the essential elements of pledge, apart from this, these are all the factors that we need to know in this segment altogether. What are all the factors that we are going to see here? There shall be bailment for security against the payment or performance of the promise. First thing, that means to say that there shall be a bailment for the security once we have made the payment for the security for the debt that we have taken the money by keeping that gold or by keeping a precious instrument as a pledge then we will get a bailment for it the next thing is that the subject matter of pledge is goods we are going to keep some object as pledge we cannot keep a human being himself as pledge we cannot keep trust as a pledge or we cannot keep intangible goods as pledge the matter here that is going to be pledged is a good that might be gold that might be silver that might be some article altogether goods pledged are shall be in existence the goods pledged for shall be in existence which means to say that they should be there it should be present it should be physically available it is not something intangible it is not something invisible or it is not something imaginary in nature goods that are pledged shall be in existence so they are available at any given point of time followed by there shall be delivery of goods from the pledger to the pledgee the delivery of goods will be from where from the person who pledges to the person who takes the pledge so that's why we call pledger to the pledgee that will be the flow of goods now there is no transfer of ownership in case of pledge at any point of time there will not be a transfer of ownership to the person the person who has pledged he is the owner only the other person cannot take over the ownership of goods at any point of time exception in exception circumstances pledgee has the right to sell the movable goods of the property that are pledged. Now, this is quite common in India. Why? Because many a times when people pledge their valuable equipments, instruments or assets for pledge and they are unable to pay back the money, after some time, the pledgee takes that particular goods and sells it in the market for the available price. This is possible, why? Because he wants to recover the money by selling those valuable assets. But at any point of time, please understand that there is no transfer of ownership. Nobody can own the goods, nobody can transfer the goods altogether. Only in case in exceptional circumstances, when at any given point of time, they are not able to repay, if the debt becomes too old, too aged enough, then what happens? The pledgee goes ahead and sells that good in the open market to recover his debt followed by the rights of the pawner. Now we are going to talk about the pledger or the pawner. As per the section 177 of the Indian Contract Act of 1872, the pawner has the right to redeem. 
which is a very very important thing by this what do we mean the repayment of the debt or the performance of the promise the pawner can redeem the goods back property pledge from the pawnee before the pawnee makes an actual sale so at any given point of time the person who has pledged the goods can go back and redeem the goods that is take back the goods after making the payment of the debt before the pony actually goes and makes an actual sale suppose i did not make any payment at all then at that time what will happen the pony will go ahead and sell my products in the market but before that the pawner or the pledger will have the right to take back the goods after making the payment followed by the right of redemption is extinguished once the actual sale is done by the pony as per his right in section 176 but in the case suppose i did not make the payment for several months or for several years altogether the pony would take my gold take my valuable asset and sell it in the market once it has been sold outright in the market the pawner will not have a right anymore on redemption of the good why because that will be automatically redeemed off that will be automatically taken off so once the sale is made then the pony cannot go back to it at all so that's why now you have to understand the pony will have his right at that point of time to take back and make his right available followed by the rights of a pony now we are going to talk about the person pony or the pledge now let's try to understand as per his rights and the Indian Contract Act of 1872 which states that right to retain the goods. The first thing is that he has the right to retain the goods. How will he retain? If the pawner fails to make a payment of debt or does not perform as per the promise that is made, then the pawnee has the right to retain the goods that are being pledged for as a security factor. Moreover, the pony can also retain goods for the non-payment of interest on debt or the non-payment of expenses that have occurred. But the pony cannot retain goods for any other debt or promise other than the agreed one in the contract. Now, as a pony, I can retain the good for any of the expenses for any of the reasons that has been caused by the pledge. But at any point of time, other than what reason I have taken it, other than what I have done in terms of contract, I should not use it for any other purpose. I should not make use of the good. I should not retain the good for any other purpose. So whenever the goods are being pledged, the pledged goods are being kept for some specific purpose. Based on the pledge, the value of money shall be given to the pledger the pony or the pledge will have the right to retain the goods as long as the payment is done followed by the right to recover extraordinary expenses the expenses incurred by the pony in terms of preservation of goods pledge can be recovered which is given under the section 175 suppose the pony incurs any kind of expenses that is in terms of retaining the goods preserving the goods any kind of special allocations that have been done they can be recovered by the pledge from the pledger so that is very very important here this is one of their rights so at any point of time you cannot say that sir this is an extra charge because the pony will have the right to recover all sort of extraordinary expenses now the right to suit or to procure debt the sale of the pledge goods on the failure to make the repayment to the pony of the debt altogether the pony will have two rights either to initiate the suit proceedings against him or to sell the goods now this is one thing very very clear suppose i did not make any payment at all no money made towards the 
debt factor the pony will have two kinds of option either he can go and file a suit against me in the court of law or you can go or he can go ahead and sell the goods so that he will be able to recover the money back so there are two options either call for a legal suit or sell the goods and make off the money this is his right altogether in the former case pony retains the goods for himself as a collateral security and initiate the court proceedings this is very very important suppose i am going to initiate a class 1 legal suit against the person that means i will retain his gold jewelry as a collateral then go to the court and initiate a case against this person followed by the next thing is that he need not provide any notice of the proceedings to the pawner you don't have to update him anything about it and in the latter case pony can sell the goods after the due notice of sale to the pawner now what we will do is that suppose things are not working out the case factors are not in favor it is not going to really get something a uh, favorable to this person then what will happen is that he will go ahead send a notice to that person saying that i am going to sell your goods after giving the new notice to sale then automatically the pawner has to agree to it and the goods sale will be initiated if the amount received from the sale of goods is less than the amount due then the rest of amount can be recovered from the pawner now this is also important for us suppose the amount that is to be recovered is about 10000 rupees but after the sale of good he has recovered only 8000 rupees so the difference of 2000 rupees can be recovered by the pony from the pawner because that is a right which has been given to him the difference amount has to be paid back to him if the pony gets more amount than the due then the surplus is to be given back to the pawner now the reverse case suppose the amount that was needed only is 8000 but if he gets 10000 he can give back that excess money back to the pawner but 99.9% of the time it is always on the lesser side so the pony will always go back to the pawner and say that you need to repay back the difference amount altogether followed by the rights of a pony now please try to understand in terms of bailment versus pledge altogether now what happens here is that in this case when we talk about bailment versus pledge and where we have the rights factor just look into here you will see that the transfer of goods from one person to another is bailment whereas in the case of pledge it moves from the security onwards now it's defined under the section 148 this is defined under the section 172 parties involved are bailer and the bailee parties involved here are the pawner and the pawny the consideration may or may not be present here the consideration is always there bailee will have no rights over the sale of goods pledgee or the pawny will have the rights of the good the bailee can use the goods only after a specific purpose only not otherwise but here the pledgee cannot use the goods at all because he has only rights to sell the purpose of bail goods is for safe keeping or for repairs but here it is to act as a security or a collateral altogether so when you see the rights of pawny as a differential factor between the bailment and pledge pledge is a special kind of bailment bailment is already there but pledge is another subsection of the bailment altogether now what are the examples that i would like to quote here is that look at the first example mr a gives his watch for repair to mr b in this case a is the bailer b is the bailee and the goods is bail is the watch factor so a is the bailer a has given his watch to b so now what happened a becomes the bailer b becomes the bailee and watch is the bailed product now illustration 2 where we are going to see here harry bailed his bike to david for riding for himself to go to the college 
David used it for a racing purpose. Now David will be liable for the unauthorized use of the bike bail. The reason why Harry gave his bike to David was for going to college. But what did David do? David misused the purpose and went for racing. Now this will call for a legal action. Why? Because Harry can file a suit saying that because of the misappropriation or the misuse of the property. The third example, Mr. X gave his cat to Mr. Y saying that for looking after for some days. Cat in that while gave birth to kittens. Now Mr. Y is liable to return the cat along with the accretions, along with the kittens altogether. This is where you need to understand. Why? Because not alone the good, it, it also belongs to the same cat. So you have to return back with the kittens. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that all the examples and the information that has been provided through this session will be of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we shall learn more about the commercial law and their terms. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.